Hi right, viewers, well, this is just a little electric magnet for that hair clipper, hair trimmer I took apart a while ago. It's only a little 0.5 amp related coil, so if I put like a little set of wires inside that, I'll get, I'll get a very crude transformer, but I don't have any real use in doing that, so I'm going to put this on it. I'm going to put some sticky tape and stuff on it so I'll make it all safe first before I do that. Stick that on there and I'll slowly turn it up and see, um, yeah, because there's no inductive, there's no metal core to, to induce any magnetism so it's going to burn out. So I've got to see what I can try out first and start to get this done properly. Should be some sticky tape in here somewhere or some electrical tape. Tape these up, connect it, tape it up. So yeah, I'll try that. Okay, viewers, well, let's try an Allen key. Let's turn this thing up very slowly. I'll probably just go, bet you that's all it's gonna do. Start from zero. Bring it to where I can get more control over it. No short, so that's good. Two hundred, two twenty, two forty. Unplugged. All right. Yeah, didn't even get hot. Basically, what I was saying before, if I had something like this as an iron core, wrapped a coil of wire around that, stuck that inside there, I would, they will actually act as a very crude transformer. Didn't get very warm either, so. So yeah, the Allen key did move a little bit. If I take the Allen key out all together, we'll start again. Yeah, nothing. That's 20 volts, so a coil. It got warm, but it didn't pop. So yeah. I'll actually put that to some use actually. See what else I could put through there. Yeah, she got hot, but yeah, obviously it's gonna burn out. Yeah. That's the, I'm not going to burn it out with this variac, no way. That'll short out. No, that's, not, yeah. that's only a 7.5 rated, 7 amp rated cord from a TV. But yeah. Basically, if I get it, as I was saying, get an iron core in there with a coil of the wire wrapped around it, I'll make myself a little transformer with that. But yeah. I'll see if I can get something to test with this. But yeah, it came out very well to the previous video. I gave it a little polish, took all the dents out. Looks very good now. See, it is a, um, turns out it's an actual general radio variac. It's got the genuine variac um, label on it. But yeah, that got a bit warm. So we'll see what ideas I can come up with that and make, get a bit of use out of it. So yeah, see what I can test. Okay, we all as well, this wash machine, I uh, autopsied, kept the cord. It's got a 439 series clip saw plug top, which someone's actually put the neutral and the active the wrong way around on. Stupid people. The wash machine still worked, you just didn't put the colour curtains on the wire the right way around. I have to fix that before I do anything, so I'll right, try not to damage anything here. What I want to do is I want to test this pump out. This is a commercial rated shuttered, I think it's, yeah, it's a dual, looks like it's got, yeah, two coils there, so yeah, shuttered polarizer pump. Heavy duty. I'll try and 
get some camera so I can undo these bolts. Take the coolant shroud off, the fan shroud, so I can get to the um, connections. I don't know how you put that plug on there, but they would put that cord on when the wash machine was brought into Australia. They put the colour coding the wrong way around. Stupid people. Unless the schematic had um, black, which is black, and brown, which is brown. So that there's probably right. And this is probably supposed to be black on the um, plug. Which that's an American schematic, so colour coding's different here. So we'll disconnect this. That's obviously the earth. Be very careful when that plug the active into that. Very deep, deep trouble for that. Try to get this off. Part of the damage to the thing. So yeah. It's got a bit of a rust on it. This looks to be an original pump too, so. Ugh, I can't get it off. I'm after this off camera. They've got some stupid clips on here, so yeah. Okay, viewers, I want to know, before I hook this up, I've got to fix this colour coding on this plug the right way around. This brand of this pump, if you want to know, it's a Henning dash EW BE 50C5 dash 075, 240 volt, one phase obviously, 150 watt, 50 hertz, isolated.kl.f, thermally protected, which is good, mounting. Horizontal axis, sixth week of 1995. So it's not the original pump to that machine. That's a 1989 model machine. This is made in 1995. Six years new on the machine, so it's gonna go like that. So the fan doesn't hit. So before I put the um this on, I'm gonna put this over it, which stops the connection hitting that. So before I get that far, I'm gonna. Fix up this colour coding. See here. Active is a neutral cord, which is not a good thing. I don't know who wired that up, but very stupid. So I'm going to fix that. Get the screwed up when you pop this off, which I tend to be very careful with these plug tops because I don't have any of these in stock or spare. So, anyway, yeah, you get the idea. You work your way around the plug top. Try not to butcher it because they are. Um, they are good plug tops, so yeah, I'll take, I'll do that. Then we can swap these um, colours right where we we'll go from there. Okay, the order, that's that connection made. Push the cord right in, but don't get the insulation caught in that connection, because you'll form what's called a um, resistance joint, which cause, which make it make or cause heat build up, and you'll melt the pin on your plug. It's not a good thing. Now I'm after pushing a bit, twist the wires. Always twist them, make sure all the strands are twisted before putting it together so none, no stray wires pop out. See, so yeah, i got to fix this earth one up properly. In theory, what I do, I make sure this end of this insulation here is hard up against the back of the plug top there. Once you put it together, what you do, you pull the plug top and pull from here. And it shouldn't withdraw from the, um, that this should not withdraw from there. So yeah, it's got that vintage rubbery smell to it. I remember that when, when I was a kid. Anyway, I'll get the fix in this earth connection up and I'll put this one here on and then we're done. Okay viewers, well that's how you terminate three pin plug top. Active and neutral the right way around. Nice neat connections. And if you can you can actually if these cords are stripped too long, instead of cutting them short to fit, you twist it and fold it over, then put it in there. And do the screws tight that way. They're a nice, clean, secure connection. And then yeah, you won't have to um it won't it won't be you won't have to worry about it burning up because you know it would be safe. So now I gotta feed the wires back around the things and we're done. Okay viewers, the colours are the right way around. And what you do you hold here and you pull this cord. And that should not withdraw very far. So it should stay very close to the end of that. Now I put this shroud back on. This, for some stupid reason it doesn't have a grip nut. So yeah, I just slide this back on. Pull that. It's a bit of um, stretch, stretch in that, but 
the earth cord's obviously longer, but they're all tucked back. Just push them apart like that, so they're not stressed. Pull that back on. There you go, now you're gonna pop the shrouding on, which is pretty damn easy. Basically you wanna do that, pull, it works best with the new clear ones, you can see in there. But when you pull, you should not have a, um, this should not withdraw from the socket. So yeah. Let's try to do some camera if I can put this on. Don't want to butcher it too much. There you go, that's one. Yeah, also don't want to nick the cords if I'm doing this. Now you can plug this into an old, um, I've got a, just an isolated outlet, I'll do this. Just hold the skirt clip in so it clips onto the edge here and not pinch. That's done. Active on the left, which is around, which is here. So that's the right way around. That's how you wire it up. Now what I want to do, plug it into this. Almost the ground, which is earth, which I'll have to bolt on the I'll have to bolt it on here externally because it's a different connector. And active here, neutral here. It's a series connected coil, so active through there, goes through there, completes the circuit through this coil, and back out the other neutral. So it's a series coiled um shadow pole motor. The reason being I'm doing this, I could just plug this into the variac and slowly ramp it up. If it works, I know it's safe. Then I'll just modify it and isolate the connection somehow with some heat shrink or something over them. Put the heat shrink over each of these connectors. Put the fan shredding back on and make a nice housing to cover from here back with that vent on it to protect it from moisture. Hook up some hoses. And I could if I wanted to hook this up to an electrolysis tank as a pump or a recirculation pump for something like that. Yeah, so for that sort of thing, it's a good, uh, pretty useful. <coughs> I've got a bit of a <coughs> hot solar float today. Anyway, and that connection's a bit oxidised, but I can get that clean. Now, you've got to make sure your earth has a good connection. Very important. That's going to fit the bolt. We'll cut through that with a thread, and now we'll tap a thread into that, which will fit into this. So, yeah, that'll work good. That's it. Plug it straight into the wall, and we're done. But before I do that, I'm going to properly wire it up, as I said. Otherwise, ground it and put the um, all this back together. Here's this little leg it sits on, which is what what it was. Um, it's this bracket when it was bolted to the machine. This is obviously pretty important to direct the airflow past the motor. So that was... That's the bottom. It was unlike that. As you can see, it's hitting. Not a good thing. Okay, this way. It misses. So if I did that, it'd be better. I could go like that, but the cord gets hit. So I'm going to have to make another thing for this somehow. Try and center this on. What I'll do is I get that has to go on there. that make goes there anyway you get the idea that goes over that and that goes in the bottom and that's it which is all wired up I've had to bend this into an elbow on the neutral side so I would accommodate this shroud and not get 
short against anything. And there's an earth wire which is scratched under here. And the bolt's just screwed through that loop terminal which I've had to cut a slit so it'll open up a bit. Then tightened it so I've got a good connection to earth. This is just going to be a test on it. And if it works, I'm going to pop the route the cord through the back and neaten it up and have some good hoses on here and put a little isolated plastic thing around here so the pump water half is isolated from the motor half. I'm going to use for a good little water pump. Actually quite good volume too so let's give her a test on the Variac to confirm it's safe. Okay, we always have one more test I want to do to confirm that the earth is at a good connection. I'm going to set this in the continuity. I'm going to set one probe on the chassis of the pump. Hopefully that's a good connection if I can hold that. Then what you want to do, you want to other end of the probe on the pin of the earth. And if there's arm um, short or it beeps, that means the circuit's closed. And that means it's successful, I've got a good earth. So that pin has a good connection to earth. Let's see what ohms we get on this motor. I'll ohm the motor. Now between the active and neutral pins, I put the multimeter probes on, the app on those pins. Let's see what we get. I don't put two ohms for a wash machine pump. <laughs> now it's to be extra, extra ultra safe. I put the thing on the ground so I can see the fan. Plug this into the output. Okay. Zero. Always make sure you start at zero. Plug this in on a power point that's turned off. Turn it on and very slowly increase your power. And that's working at 100 volts, 120 volts. All right, let's crank it up. That's a nice loud coming motor. Yeah. No suction on that side. This needs gravity to force the water down into it for it to work. I can't just put a hose on there and suck it at anything that's lower than that or at the same level. These pumps need um, gravity fed to, to get into prime. It's air coming out though, so it's good. No suction needs water to prime it. So 80 volts. Nice and fast. So yeah. You're very actually good for little things like this. Safety first before I touch it. Good second nature, make sure you unplug before you touch this. So yeah, for something like this a variac is very handy. The warnings aren't even uh I wouldn't say they're warm but normal operating temperature. So at 280 volt I got a little bit warm but I wouldn't want it at that. That's good. Now I've got to run that in the housing under there or just tape it around here. Put a little housing over it, plastic thing that will separate from there to there as I was saying. I could have this set under a table for example. How many electrolysis tank up this level? A valve here or on, on here to shut it off. Do the electrolysis job and if I've got a the tank's too big for me to carry. This is what you need, you could use. If, it, if you've got a big tank indoors, too heavy to carry, and you want to get the water that quick, there's a little commercial pump would be very handy for that. So, I'm going to keep that. So, yeah. I've got a very handy pump. That's... Now that I've tested the very and it passed. It's safe. So yeah. There you go, Bills. Got a nice little handy pump from a washing machine. So yeah. 
Thanks for watching.